<laughs> give it up, 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 give it up. At that time. Most news shows are suspect. They don't focus on black issues, and when they do, it's all fluff. How does that help your life? How does that help your family? How does that help the culture? They don't. The Tim Black Show is different. Tim Black gives you news for people who can't stand the news. Real, authentic, researched, entertaining, on point. Don't let nobody take your cornbread. Visit www.timblacktv.com today. Get black breaking news, politics, culture from someone you can trust. TimBlackTV.com. Join us today. And I think that means we're on board, Johnson. What's up, people? How y'all doing? What is cracking? My people, my people, my people. Hello, my name is Tim Black. Welcome back to the Tim Black Show, Johnson. Give it up for my people. Drums in this house. What is happening? Long time no see. <laughs> Man, what's up, people? What's up? What's going on? We're going to get into some political conversation, some real life breaking news type stuff. We're going to talk it up tonight. Are my people in the house? What's going on, people? What's happening? What is going on? Yes. Are we good? What's up, Tobias? Aaron, what's up? C Peace. Miles to go is in the house as well. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate y'all. How's the audio doing? How's that audio doing? What is up? What's up? What's up? My brother Aaron said, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> oh, man. We are starting off already with it, Johnson. It is early. We out the gate already messing up. We cutting up already, man. What is up, people? How y'all doing, man? It's been a minute, man. And I'm very... I'm actually very excited to do this. I'm very excited to do this. Guys, you realize it has been a minute. I'm feeling a little, you know, I'm homesick for you guys. I am homesick for some of you guys. Not everybody. Not everybody. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, you know. You know. What is going on? <laughs> Some people, I'm glad. Hey, look, I needed a break. You needed a break. I needed a break from some, you know. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot of cracking, man. It is it is political season time. Oh, that just stays. See, I, I got to learn how this works. So I'm using StreamYard. So I got to learn, got to learn to take the comments off. Uh, Tobias is in the house. What's up, Tobias? Giving me up love, giving me up love. Love back at you. TG, Miles to go up in the house. What's up, Miles to go? I like this. I can put comments on the screen. Yo, yo, yo. BD Brown says, what's up, Mr. Black Letter Show? Keep it coming. Thank you, brother. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my brother, my brother, my brother. And people say, people mad because Dr. West called people brother. Man, it's just a figure of speech. It's a figure of speech. For brothers. <laughs> men, men say it, but I feel what you said. I, I feel y'all. So what's up, people? We got so much to cover. First thing I'm going to do, um, let me let people know what the show is going to be. We're going to be talking about a number of events, a number, a number of things that have happened over the last couple of days. We're going to very briefly go on some Candace Owens because I got something I have to add about Candace Owens. We're going to talk about briefly the, the bridge, um, which one of my people alluded to earlier. The Democratic Party is very arrogant, and there's been some polling out that really should put them in the right frame of mind to win this thing, but they don't want to win. Not if it means they got to do something for you. Not if it means they have to, like, do things. There's been a lot of gaslighting going on. I think 2024 will be the year of the gaslighter. That's, that makes sense, guys? That makes sense? That makes sense. As people start filing in, guys, could you share this out and let people know that we're in the house? I, I think that people need to know. People need to know where, where we're at, what we're doing, and let me know where you're from. StreamYard gives me a lot of access to be able to send messages and stuff. I like this tool. 
So what we got? We got Candace Owens. We got P. Diddy. We got the Democratic Party. We got bad polling. We got uh, Trump stuff. Oh, so we have a whole lot for people to be interested in tonight. Make no mistake about it. It's it's really going down tonight, man, and I'm really feeling it. And I know it's going to be an epic show. It's, it's a great comeback show. And before I get started, because I will forget this, I want to give a shout out to my guest who's going to be here tomorrow with me. Her name is Sonny Johnson. Give it up for Sonny Johnson, y'all. Yeah, Sonny Johnson will be my guest tomorrow. She's a political commentator. She has a show on Sirius called Sonny's Corner. She is a, uh, a conservative, and she's one of the best kind of conservatives. That's one that lives in the real world, talks about real life stuff, is serious about what she's about, serious about her business, stands on her business, and I'm looking forward to having that conversation. We opening up this platform. We're going to not just talk about Republicans or Democrats. We're going to have Republicans and Democrats on this show. Give it up for that. And let the chips fall where they may. And if y'all know Sonny like I know Sonny, Sonny is down for a good argument. Like I came on Sonny's show. She had me on her show first. And that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? You know how refreshing it is to have somebody of her stature invite me on her own show. She got a show on Sirius FM, man. She been doing the thing for about 15, 20 years. I don't know how long. And she invited me on her show first. That is kind of rare, you know? I got these people kind of afraid to bring me on this show. And this sister didn't give a damn shit. Hey, come on. So shout out to Sonny Johnson. Shout out to Tess and Figaro. These are the people that brought me on this show, regardless if I brought them on my show or not, you know? So big respect. Big, res big respect. Big up. We have a great conversation, man. Be here tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tim Black and Sonny Johnson. Jo Sonny Johnson is going to be my special guest, and I'm looking forward to it. Put me on your calendar tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to jump off into it, man. I got some clips. I got some stuff. Let me go back to my comment section. There we go. Is that Nina Turner? Is that D Nina Turner up in the house? Get up for Nina Turner. Sister Nina Turner's in the house. Get up for my sister Nina Turner. Thank you, Nina. That's a beloved Nina. See, look, Nina's gonna make me. What's up? What's up with you? What's up with you, Nina Turner? Get up for this lady. And look, Nina Turner. Let me let me tell you guys. I saw a clip of Nina Turner. She was on the Breakfast Club. And uh, she tore the house down. She tore the house down on the Breakfast Club. She put a foot in it. You know how she do. I tell you, man, one of the one of the things that uh, that am amazes me is the amount of talent that some of our sisters have that I don't think give their due, man. Like I'm serious, man. And like I know y'all say, oh, Nina Turner, everyone knows Senator Nina Turner all over the globe. I understand that, but when it comes to being able to electrify a crowd, make a salient point, say something with both, you know, all 10 toes down, be committed, be fully engaged, that's Nina Turner, man. And I think, you know, real talk, man. And I believe that Nina Turner is one of the foremost political builders. Not just a commentator, man. Anybody can commentate. Anybody can analyze. She's been around the country talking to real people. And whenever you talk to her, you can sense it's a real person talking to you. And she gets up and she stands on the issues. Do yourself a favor. Go check out her segment on Breakfast Club. I'm upset about the Breakfast Club and what they did with uh, Candace Owens, but I'm not upset with them bringing on Nina Turner. Nina Turner said it. She said, hey, if Joe Biden was so happen to lose, one thing you bet not do, one thing we not going to do, is blame black people, particularly black men. We ain't going to do that. I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. If Nina Turner, if Nina Turner's, if she wasn't who she is, which is a person that's going to stand on her principles, 
If she was all the things people who have smeared her said she was, she wouldn't be doing what she's doing right now. <laughs> if Nina Turner was half the things that people who have smeared her said that she was, she'd be so rich and so untouchable and already be like, you just don't understand. And that's going to lead me, that's a perfect segue into what I'm saying about um, this whole Candace Owens thing. Someone said, Tim Black, is this Candace Owens thing? Is you? Why are you so upset about this? Why are you so upset about Candace Owens? What is up with you? I want to be clear, man. Let's, let me break this down for people so that you understand where I'm coming from. Everyone that's in political commentary, every, no, let me back up. I'm sorry. I got loud for them. Every black American, every black American that's in political commentary, Every one of us, all of us who've been around for more than five minutes knows one thing. And I want all my white viewers to listen. I want all my black viewers to listen. I want all my Asian viewers to listen, all of my Native American. I want everybody to listen close. If you don't believe me, if you think I'm BSing you, I want you to look me directly in my face. I want you to hear this from the depths of my soul. Every black commentator who's been in this business, who's been doing this work for any amount of time will tell you the easiest way to get a bag is to throw black people under the bus. If there is a black person in media who would say that's not true, they are lying to you. You understand what I'm telling you? Every, every black person that's in this business knows that's the easiest way to get a bag. Playing to white supremacy, playing to bigotry, playing to throwing black people under the bus, playing to the stereotypes, feeding into that, othering black people, Shaming black people as a black person is a lucrative pathway to almost guaranteed success. Do you understand what I'm telling you? We all know it. So every time I hear these people talking, they're making it sound like I don't know what I'm talking about when I'm telling you that Candace Owens sold her so long ago and you were just way off base. And this goes for white people, black people, Latino people, Asian American, Native American, everybody. It goes for everybody. Jewish, Palestinian. Left foot, right foot, LGBTQ, I don't care. Irish, Italian, Puerto Rico, yay, Puerto Rico, hey, whatever. Everyone knows, everyone's got it. Look, this is basic. So what Candace Owens has been doing has not been that special. It's what anybody could do. Anybody could win doing that. Now. The success, the levels of success that you will have if you are willing to throw black people under the bus, if you are black, the levels of success that you success that you can have will vary based on your skill level, your articulate, your way to articulate a vision, your commitment to it, and also the le the lengths that you are willing to go. The lengths that you are willing to go. The lengths that you are willing to go and throwing black people under the bus. You understand what I'm saying to you? Do I look like I'm being serious? Do I look like I'm being sincere with you? Does it look to you that I'm reading off something? That I have some type of microphone in my ear? Someone's telling me what to say? Does it appear to you that I'm giving you talking points given to me by some person that's got puppet strings on me or something? Or does it feel like I'm telling you my truth. <laughs> Folks, I ain't got no reason to lie to you, man. I'm too broke to lie to you. People that lie to you get paid. People that lie to you get paid. So as much as I disagree with so many people, Johnson, I disagree with so many people in this space who do what they do. 
But I don't care who it is, what we've disagreed on it at whatever point in time. If they are not, if they are black American and they are not throwing black people under the bus, they made a decision not to do that. That goes for Sabby Sabs, that goes for Brianna Joy Gray, that goes for all of the Fred Hampton people, that goes for all the reset race people, that goes for all the people on MSNBC, that goes for Dr. Jason Johnson, that goes for uh, any everyone, anybody, with Tiffany Cross, that goes for Joy Reid, that goes for everybody. You got to understand, all ideology aside, folks, all ideology aside, that goes for anyone, Sonny, Sonny Johnson, that goes for Tessa Figaro, that goes for everyone, that goes for Philip Scott, that goes for the Black Authority, that goes for Roland Martin. Yes, it does. See, we got to see, I'm, folks, I'm a grown-ass man, y'all. I don't know when it happened. I'm a grown-ass man. I done messed around and became an OG. I can't lie to you, man. Somebody got to say it. All these people that I got disagreements with that we just we differ politically, right? There is no mistake about it. I differ. I, I strongly differ with Roland Martin on his politics in a lot of ways. Okay, I strongly disagree with Abby Phillip and Joy Reid and Tiffany Cross and Andrew Gillum and Angela Angela Rye and, and you know and and, and Charlemagne the God and and Jess Hilarious and. The, the, I really learned something today. Lord, Lord, please help us. Jess Alurius said, I learned some, so much from you, Candace. Please take my soul. Here you go. I want some money too. As much as I disagree with these people, and they disagree with my ass too, Mark Lamar Hill. Mark Lamar Hill. I disagree with Mark on some things. Not everything, but some things. Torre, I disagree with him. You understand what I'm saying? I disagree with some white people too. But what I'm telling you is it's different for white folks. There is a social penalty for white people to pay when they throw black people under the bus because of the history of America. But see, black people get rewarded when they do it. Do you understand? And all of those people that we disagree with, do you understand where I'm coming from? All the people that I disagree, Johnson, all those black folks that I disagree with, they have made a decision that they will not stoop to that. Do you understand that? They've all had that access. They've all had the access. They all have the ability to do that. They decided not to. Give it up for that. Give it up for that. I'm serious now. I'm serious. I'm serious because, see, there are some people that are watching this show that don't really understand what I'm saying. Listen, if you had a way that you could make more money with doing whatever you're doing, if you had a way to make more money, sometimes a lot more money, Multi-million dollars more money if you got the right skill set. You can't suck. You got to be good at what you do. You have to be good at what you do. That's I'm, I'm saying if you're already good at what you do, you can already get up and light up a crowd. If you can go in front of people and talk and do so in a way that communicates points, you got to be able to do that. Everybody can't do this. So we're going to put aside that. You got to have a certain skill set. You had to work on that. Okay, I'm not saying it's impossible or, it's, or like you got to be kissed by an angel. I'm just saying you got to be good at what you do. Besides that, they all have this lane that they could pursue. Every one of them. So as we go through this, as we go through this political season and we're taking shots at one another and we're saying things and I'm having criticism, harsh criticism. I'm digging in. I'm smacking them down. I'm doing my calling it out show. And I'm calling it out. And I'm putting this person down. And I'm putting that brother down. And I'm putting this sister down. And I'm saying how I feel. And I'm using my facts and my points of view. And I'm stressing it. 
And I'm serious and I'm all in. I'm committed to it. And I ain't pulling no punches. I ain't leaving no stone unturned. I'm keeping it 100,000 with you. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm being brutally honest. I'm eviscerating these folks. I'm calling them out. I'm putting them down. I'm knocking them out. Keep in mind. Keep in mind. I know in my heart, my heart of hearts, they could be much worse. <laughs> Case in point, Candace Owens. Ooh, so, if I had a dollar for every person who doesn't know what they're talking about, trying to tell me, she really mean well. Folks, they take her out of context when she talks. She a real sister. They take her out of context, and she means well. And they only put that up when she says the negative stuff about black people. They be working against her. And when she says stuff that's really good, they don't share that. She knows that. Duh. Duh. I seen her. Man, I told y'all, I don't have time to play games. I got no reason to lie to you. I seen this woman try to be a basic commentator, talking about trivial matters like rappers, what's happening in fashion, Hollywood. The numbers do like this. Because anybody could do that. When you have unleashed the Kraken, you got to keep unleashing the Kraken. And when that happens, when her numbers started going low, what does she do? She pivots back and swings on black folks, particularly black men. That's her bread and butter, Johnson. And she knows it. Okay? So that's my problem with Candace Owens. It's not a personal thing. It's not a personal attack. It's not. It's a difference of opinion on political matters. She could be a fine friend. She could be an excellent person to talk about. She might be a great dominoes player. I don't know. Whatever stupid shit. I'm sorry. Whatever nonsense Charlemagne was asking her. Is she really black? Is she really black? Whatever. Are we? How old? We. Are, we've. That's a grown ass. Is she black? Let's do a black test. Do you know the words to Rapper's Delight? I thought Diddy was on the run. Why are you doing a Diddy up there? This ain't making the band. What are you doing, Charlemagne? You're interviewing the most controversial black commentator in the last 10, 20 years who's been the most negative towards black people, a bar none, compared to any other commentator in this space for the last 20 years. And you talking to her about Food Salad and Will Smith's lyrics to Parents Just Don't Understand to prove her blackness. How about proving the blackness about throwing, about that documentary about George Floyd? All right, I don't, look, you know what? I don't want to go any further. I've gone far enough, right? We've gone far enough. I've gone far enough, man. Let me, let me cut it, man. What I'm trying to tell you is, if another person comes up to me who don't understand what's going on, all I'm... I'm not gonna say nothing to you because obviously you don't you don't get it. It's like if you ever worked in retail, you did pricing or merchandise. Okay, here goes a perfect example. I was at the grocery store about a year ago. I remember I was at the grocery store and it was a young black kid who was. Um, ringing me up. He was ringing me up for groceries. And you know when you get to that part where you swipe your card and then it asks you, do you want to round up? Do you want to round up? Help the kids. Do you want to round up? I was like, he said, do you want to round up, sir? I was like, it's for the kids, right? He was like, he looked around first like, Man, they say it's for the kids. <laughs> Team you and me, man. They put that money in their pocket, man. They don't do nothing for them kids, man. They don't even do nothing for the store. They don't even do nothing with us, for us with, this, with that money, man. They just take that money and put it on their books, man. That's all they do, man. 
I wouldn't do it if I was you. I said, my brother, thank you, my brother. I was let in on the secret. I was let in on the secret. And ever since then, I stopped rounding up because I now knew something I didn't know. I meant well. How am I not going to want to contribute the 30, 40, 50 cents to help the schools? But the money ain't making it to the school. How many of y'all are like, man, I ain't know that, Tim Black? For real? For real? Man, I've been, man, they've been, you know how much money I done gave them around and up? What I'm trying to tell you is you don't know what you don't know, but once you know it, you can't unknow it. All right, y'all, let's get going. Let's get going. And now you know. Now you know. All right, I got a couple videos I want to cover tonight, man. We got a couple clips I'd like to get to to kind of, like, get us going. <laughs> Look at this. See, this is the type of stuff I got. Brian C. says, I'm black. I'm voting for Joe Biden because he said so. <laughs> Man, y'all want, why I can't, why y'all make me bad, Brian? Why you make me bad, fam? Why you do this to me, man? <laughs> ah! James, all right, Jizzle said James Carville knows what's about to happen. <laughs> I can feel it coming in the air. I'm dying. How'd that go? Yeah, you know it. By the grace of God, y'all, Nina Turner's holding it down. Thank you, Nina Turner, for, for what you do. Mazel to God, the great. If you are reducing it down to lesser two evils, then you're already lost. Raziel, Raziel in the house holding me down. Thank you, Raziel, for holding me down. Yeah. Anybody can see right through Candy Owens. Donald James said anybody can see right through Candy Owens. Is that true? <laughs> nah, nah, not everybody. Them wasn't all bots that was in my comment section. Some of those are real people. I put my content on three platforms. <laughs> I see foolish people on TikTok. I see foolish people on Facebook. I see foolish people on Twitter. It's people buying it on YouTube too. That's four platforms of gullibleness. But I'm gonna get to this. Let's get over to the democratic arrogance, folks. The only way something can improve is if you're willing to take criticism. That's the only way anything improves. The only way anything gets better is by actually admitting there is a way, there is a need to get better. There is something to aspire to. There are, we can make improvements. That's the first step. Before you take any action, you got to be open to the idea that action is necessary, that action could be helpful, and that where you are is not where you could be. Can we all agree on that? Y'all with me right there? So see, that's why I got a problem with the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is operating under the belief everything is good. Everything is fine. Case in point. Yes, that Trump is gaining their support. You had yes, that Trump is gaining their support. You had your fellow South Carolinian, James Clyburn, in January saying that Biden's message was not breaking through the MAGA wall, so to speak. Has Biden's message done anything to change that? Well, I, I fundamentally believe, as in past elections, the African-American community, the black vote, will be there for Joe Biden in this election. When we look at what he has done and accomplished, this is not just words, but actually how he's delivered He's made sure that we've had, as a community, a seat at the table. Just think about this. Personally, you know, there has been no Democratic president who's ever appointed a black person to be the chair of the DNC. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, y'all. Lord have mercy. You hear that? You heard him. You heard him. Y'all heard him. Give it up for that. Give it up for that. Jamie Harrison said, black people going to be there for Joe. Because Joe done did so much for us. For instance, he gave me a job. With a straight face, this black man got on TV. And he said, black people going to be there. That mean all us. I mean all y'all. Y'all going to be there for Joe Biden. Why? That because he opened up some grant money for some businesses. Not because he made a federal requirement that all government contracts that black small businesses have direct access with 20% of contracts, first bid on all contracts, of 20% of, of all contracts, or something to that extent, something like that. It's something Maria Burry did in D.C. Maria Burry had a similar, as an executive of D.C., the mayor of D.C., <coughs> Mayor Mary Burry, you're the one with the drug, the drug problem that everybody talks smack about. He had an executive order as mayor. He wrote that gave black people, uh, small businesses, access to, to bidding on these contracts and winning, getting awarded contracts. But that's not what Jamie Hurst is talking about. He going to get sued if he try that. He can't actually do something for us because if he do, he will be sued. People get sued for everything in America. But Jamie Harrison is saying, we we going to be there for him. We going to be there for him. Joe should not worry because Joe did something. Joe gave him a job. Which, which displays very clearly the level of arrogance of the Democratic operatives. Folks, is what they're working with. That's what they do. I don't know how to make it any clearer to you. We're talking about, we're talking about a president that's polling at 38, 39%. I give him 40. I heard he got a little bump somehow. I don't know what it was from. Folks, I saw a poll that said 75% of Americans don't even want Joe Biden to run. 75% of Americans think he's too old to run. Now I get it. A lot of those people don't want to go vote for Jill Stein or Dr. Cornel West or Dr. Jill Stein or Claudia De La Cruz. There's a couple other sisters. There's, a new, there's another sister out there somewhere I heard about. Ambocious, revolutionary. Off K. Jr. Mary Williamson, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's also Trump. So I understand that there's, you know, there's limited choices with the duopoly the system that we have. I get that. But what I'm telling you is they know that. A lot of people don't even know that these rest of these people run it. So those people are looking at the fact, they keep saying, well, people accept the fact that it's just Joe and Trump. It's going to change. Look, I love my little sister. My little sister is amazing. I love her with all my heart. She knows I has a show. Did I have a show? Has a show. She knows I have a show. She don't even know who Dr. Cornell West is. I told her last, talked to her last week. She was like, who? Who? What I'm telling you is, those numbers that are polling so bad for Joe Biden, those people already know, or they are, they're under the impression that it's just Joe and Trump. And the numbers are that bad. We got Jamie Harrison, the leader of the DNC, the leadership of the Democratic Party, saying, hey, Joe, good, man. Hey, black people going to be there for him. Ah. Black people going to be there for him. He gave Jamie Harrison the job. I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all. But I got a feeling that some of y'all are unmoved. Some of you are going to be unimpressed by the fact that Jamie Harrison's chunky butt got a job. 
I, I got a feeling some of y'all not going to vote for Joe just because he gave Jamie a job. <sighs> Am I right? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, Andre said, uh, Oh, B.D. Brown, B.D. Brown, B.D. Brown. My brother, my brother. <laughs> Fire in the hole. <laughs> B.D. is pissed. What I'm saying, folks, is that this attitude that Jamie Harrison has. By the way, Jamie Harrison ran for Senate in South Carolina against Lindsey Graham. He got beat like a Congo. From the Congo. Folks, do you are you aware of the campaign Jamie Harrison ran against Lindsey Graham? How much time y'all got? Y'all got a few minutes. Y'all got a few minutes. Okay, first let me tell you this. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all in for something tonight. Let me tell y'all something. Being black is not... A sob story. I mean, you may have a sob story, but being black got to be about more than just your sob story. Oh, all my life I was black. <gasps> you got to run on more than just I'm black. Uh, it's a 15, 14% of America's black. Why else should you get the job? Besides, you black. It, I came from a single family home. Okay. Okay. A lot of people come from single family homes. Even white people. Jamie. Jamie Harrison ran on the fact he is black, his mama black, and he come from a single family home. That was his campaign. That was it. He was Tim Scott without the charisma. This mofo, he took, do you know how much money they gave this dude? They gave him millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. You know what he did? He took the millions of dollars. Thank you for the millions of dollars, y'all. Set the millions of dollars down. Start digging a big ass ditch. Ugh. 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 He was really digging this big ditch. Ugh. Ugh. Then he took the big ass money of millions of dollars and he threw the money in the ditch. Ugh. Yeah, did I tell y'all that my mama black and she's single? We was on food stand. Did I tell y'all that? Okay. And he emptied all the money. Let's try to get all the money out this. Then he went and got some gasoline. And he squirted it in the hole on top of the money. Did I tell y'all I had it rough growing up? Sometimes we didn't know what we was going to eat. He squirt that on the money. And he got a big book of matches. <sighs> Did I tell y'all I really like being a Democrat? It's a lot of opportunity for broke, poor people who grow up single who are black in the Democratic Party. And Lindsey Graham is racist. <sighs> and then he lit the money in the hole up. Lizzie Graham beat he beat, Jeremy, he beat Jamie Harrison so bad the ghost of slave masters was coming back like come on man come on man it was 12 years of slave in South Carolina Jim Clyburn couldn't even help Jamie Jim was like Jesus Christ boy you 
I give you all my pharmaceutical money, and this is the best you could do. How you gonna lose by 25 points? Jamie Harrison got his ass kicked. And what the Democrats do? Reward him with another job. They're not serious, y'all. They are not serious at all about business. They are not standing on business. Jamie Harrison is an indication. He's a perfect example of what I mean about not being, not taking it seriously. Being lackadaisical, it's all about the money. It's about having a cushy lifestyle. Jamie Harrison has done nothing, absolutely nothing, that should give him the prestige that he has other than they know he's going to do what they want him to do. And whenever they want to play some music and throw some sand on the ground, he'll come out and do his best spoken word about how hard it is to be black. And, and that's enough for them. But you know who it was not enough for? It was not enough for South Carolinians to vote for his ass as senator. This man is an embarrassment to embarrass people. Embarrass people. And uh, Ricky, people are people are clowning Ricky, what's the name? Ricky uh Kerry Lake or whatever, whatever her name is, the one that lost her. I swear I think she black. The crazy one that was for Trump that she lost, I forget it. Doesn't matter. I see her, but I can't see her. You know what I'm saying? People clear people clown Lauren Bobert. <laughs> Jamie Harrison is worse. That's the thing that kills me about some people. They can only see the bad Republicans. Jamie Harrison is a horrible politician, y'all. Back to my point, folks. Back to my point. The Democrats are very arrogant. They don't feel nothing needs to change. Nothing. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. And that's why they're going to lose. Joe Biden, it looks like they're going to lose. It looks that way. I feel strongly that they will lose. I'm not, I can't see the future, though. But I'm trying to tell you, the arrogance in which the Democratic Party operates is not the way that a person or a group or an entity or an organization would operate that is serious about winning. Here it is. It's like saying you want to be a track star, but you don't go to the track. You don't want to do any laps. And you think you should win because you got a hard luck story. It is pathetic. It's degrading. And I'm tired of black people being able to use that to manipulate other black people. Black people, we don't have to support somebody just because they're black. What, deeds. What have you done? And that's exactly what they're doing here with Joe Biden. Joe Biden, he said Joe Biden deserved a win. Black people will be there for him just because he helped other black people. Hey, hey, he gave Kamala a job. Thanks, thanks, Kamala. Great. That got nothing to do with black people. Has to do with Kamala. Okay? That does not earn you a vote. You had to do that. She only reason why you got elected. All right, I'm going to keep it moving, guys. I'm going to keep it moving. Give it up for uh, CP. Thank you, CP. CP, thank you for the, for the sticker, CP. Give it up. All right, let's keep it moving, guys. I got more. Get hung up. Get hung up. My bad. Uh, here we go. I want to say the same thing. Because I know that there's some people out there and they're like, Tim Black, Tim Black, come on, man. All the Democrats are this, aren't this bad. You're focusing on just Jamie Harris is nobody. Who is this guy? I always get people saying that. Oh, come on, Tim Black. This person's not even relative. He's not even relevant. That's the word. He's not relevant, Tim. Why do you care about him? He's the leader of the DNC. But okay, okay. What about Clyburn? Is Clyburn re relevant? Is he? Is James Clyburn, is he relevant? Because I got a clip of James Clyburn. He's
He still does not want to accept reality. Folks, it is late in the game for the Democrats. The Democrats don't want to accept reality. There is nothing you can do with them. Don't blame me. Don't Look, don't hate the guy telling you what the weather is. Don't, hey, look, I'm telling you, it is only March. Today was 50 degrees in D.C. You can't have a cookout. I mean, you can if you're stupid. It is not cookout weather. <laughs> James Clapper, ladies and gentlemen. Carolina voters head to the polls tomorrow for the first official Democratic primary of the year. Four years ago, black voters in South Carolina rescued Joe Biden's bid for the presidency, fueled in large part by an endorsement from Congressman James Clyburn. That South Carolina victory put then-candidate Biden on a path to the White House. I spoke with Congressman Clyburn earlier today about the president's standing among the Democratic base and with black Americans in particular. Congressman Clyburn, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. So I know you say the president still enjoys strong support in South Carolina, but more broadly, a December Associated Press poll found that 50 percent of black adults said they approve of President Biden, but that's compared with 86 percent who said the same thing back in July of 2021. What do you think accounts for that slip in support overall? Well, I don't think there's been a big slip in support. I think that people express themselves uh, at the time they were asked the question. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Folks, Jim Clyburn just said, hey, the, no, the commentator said, hey, 50% of black people are supporting, say they support Joe Biden. That sounds okay until you hear the last time it was 80%. What say you? He said, it's not real. Delusional. Delusional. That's a 30 point slide. We talk about 30 points. Most trusted group. 30-point slide. And he says, hey, man. Let's go back. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Now, back at the time this poll was taking place, I was asking questions uh, about people who uh, believed what they were seeing on social media. The best example I know is on student loan debt relief. Joe Biden had promised that. And that was a big, big deal in the African-American community. And when he offered uh, his uh, programs uh, to reduce or eliminate that debt, he got sued. Uh, and that lawsuit uh, was lost. And everybody focused on What is Jim Clark talking about? What is Jim talking about? What is Jim talking about? First of all, folks, I'm I'm gonna be real with y'all. Some of you know know this already. Some of y'all know this already. But I want I want this for the people in the cheap seats. The cheap seats. Listen, not everybody goes to college. I know, right? I know. And if you don't go to college, guess what? This ain't even a conversation you want to listen to. It's important. It ain't everything. When the Democrats talk, they talk about the student debt, student debt like it was everything. Folks, there are some things that are more important than student debt. And he's not even talking about wiping out all student debt. That's what the ask was. People wanted everybody's to. There are countries where you can go to school for a very nominal price. Pay for your books and if you live on campus. There are countries. Countries. Like Sweden. 
like Australia. That crazy, that, that, you know what I'm saying? That made up countries like Bob's country. No, countries that we've heard of that are in NATO, like Israel, like Israel, where you can go to school and pay hardly nothing. That's what the ask was. That's what a lot of a lot of folks want. They wanted, see, once upon a time there was only high school. Once upon a time, once upon a time there was no let me back up. Once upon a time there was no high school. I know that was crazy, right? 50 years ago, everybody didn't go to high school. Yeah? You know? 60s? I don't know when they start doing it. There was a time in history when there was no high school. There was a time when it was just grade school, and then you just said, hey, screw it. All right, I'm just saying, like, we have not evolved our, our school system. Our education system has not evolved, evolved. It should have. The point is this. Americans would be excited if this actually did impact everyone. If Joe Biden, Department of Education, got together and said, you know what? Free public college for everybody who wants to go, who's willing to do X, Y, Z. That would be a big game changer. Not only would it be college, but it would be a trade school. You could take up being a mechanic. You could take up being a nurse. You could take up being a, a, a carpenter. Like, different things. Things that when I was in high school, we used to do a class called shop. We learned stuff. Things to do besides go read a book. Become a political, political science major. What I'm trying to tell you is, that ain't going to save Joe. And Clyburn is delusional. But actually, I don't even think he is. He just wants to get through the questions. He has to know it's ineffective. He has to know this does not help. Someone had to stop him. Somebody black had to stop him in the grocery store at some point. Clyburn's in the grocery store buying, buying some Skippy peanut butter. You. Jiffy. Skippy, Skippy, Jiff, Jiff, Skippy. Somebody walk up. Jim Clapper. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jim Clapper. I'm the most progressive, 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 progressive buying peanut butter. What do you want? Jim, why should we vote for Joe Biden? And don't tell me about that damn suit low. What you mean don't tell me about suit low? Everybody knows suit lows will make your life better. Jim, I am 70 years old, Jim. Jim, I'm 70. I don't have kids. Stop talking to me about this shit. Talk to me about. Talk about something helping my life. You helping some kids go to school. Don't help me, Jim. Oh, I ain't think about it like that. I'm going to write this down in my book. Somebody had to stop Jim at some point and enlighten his ass to the realities of life. You cannot tell me that Jim Clyburn has gone through life and not known this stuff. What I'm telling you is, it's all a grift. This is nonsense. They're not even trying to win. It's the falsehood. They want to pretend to win. And what they think they're going to do is sail in using scare of Orange Man bad. Orange Man is devil. What did, Jim, what did Joe Biden say? He going to put you back in chains. He gonna put you back in chains. Joe Biden said that out of his mouth. He said, black people, they wanna put you back in chains. That's your president. Cause every time I turn around, I gotta hear somebody say, J -J Trump said something about some sneakers. He said, all black people are gonna wanna buy sneakers. Eh, I don't think that's exactly what he said, but I do know that Joe Biden exactly said he would have put you back in chains. I don't see nobody complaining about it. The point is this, guys. The Democratic Party wants to get is delusional. They caught out Jim Clyburn. Jim Clyburn don't got nothing to say. It's a lost cause at this point. The only this is why we've been watching back-to-back -back coverage of Donald Trump. Is he going to jail this week? This week on CBS, maybe Trump will go to jail. You know, 
Every every week. Every week. That's the story because that's what they need to happen. Because without that happening, if they got to run on, if they have to compete against Trump just based on Joe Biden, it's a losing proposition. And once again, I'm a Dr. Cornell West supporter. If I wasn't supporting Dr. Cornell West, it would be another third party. I have not voted. I have not voted Democrat or Republican since 2000. Was it 1996? I don't know shit. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long time. Okay. I voted no, 2008. I voted for Obama in 08. I'm sorry. 08. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to go to some comments, man. I got to, I got to. <laughs> okay, okay. So I said, Joe is like a grant, a slave grifter. Joe is like a grant, a slave grifter. <clears throat> grant a slave grifter. A slavery grifter. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I agree with the grifter part, though. I, be, I agree with the grifter part. <laughs> He's definitely a grifter, and it's not working. If, if, if I, is, is that clear? I got another clip. Now, this, I forget what this sister says. But uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, if I remember this sister correctly. She's going to put out the polling once again. She's going to put out polling, but these people are going to be a little bit more honest about what it means. Okay, I want people to wrap their head around. I don't want people losing their minds like they did last time when Trump won and people was acting crazy. Jake Uger and Anna Kasparian, they were both about to jump off a bridge. And it was sad, man. There were people literally jumping in front of cars. I don't want you liberals to lose your minds. I know I probably don't have a lot of liberals watching this show, but I don't want you to do that to yourself. I want you prepared for the inevitable or the highly probable. Okay? I want you, I want you surprised. This sister keeps it 100. 39% of voters in Ohio approve of President Biden's job as president. It also found that 58% of women, 63% of voters under 30, and 61% of independents disapprove of the president. Now our political panel, Jasmine Wright and Daniela Diaz. Jasmine is a politics reporter covering the 2024 election at notice. And Daniela is a congressional reporter for Politico. Uh, welcome to both of you. I guess, Jasmine, I want to start off with you because I know you've spent a lot of time covering the president, yeah. uh, not just uh, in this cycle, but the last cycle as well. Uh, in addition, we have some CBS News polling that shows 73 percent of voters in Ohio say that the president shouldn't even be running. I mean, is this a sentiment that's just limited to Ohio, or is this a broader sentiment? of voters around the country and how should the campaign deal with this? Yeah, Nicole, I think it is uh, a broader uh, issue because if, you know, it's just another example, I think we see this larger trend uh, that voters just don't want to see a rematch between President Biden and former President Trump. They've said it in poll after poll after poll. But now, at the right? end of the day, that's what they're getting. That's what they're getting. <laughs> and I think if you ask the Biden campaign, they will tell you repeatedly, you know, voters are 
around the country and how. Oh, my bad, guys. I didn't realize I was muted. Let me let me do that again. Let me do it because that was a good one. I, I went on a good little rant. Check this out, guys. This 73% number that you're looking at right here, that 73% number, that number right there, that number is not because of Killer Mike. That number is not because of Killer Mike. It's not because of Kanye West. It's not because of Sexy Red. You can't blame 50 Cent. You understand what I'm saying? Why is it that they want to blame rappers for this? Do you see this number? This is a big-ass number. 73% is a huge number. That's white people. That's black people. That's Ohio. Ohio is the state you need to win. It is not Maryland. It's the state you need to win. Or Maine. It's not Maine. Maine. You need to win Ohio. There's a lot of electoral votes in Ohio. 73% of the people are like, man, you don't even need to show up, bro. It baffles the mind how badly Joe Biden is performing at this point. Once again, folks, and I want you to know this because there may be some, some people that are new to this channel. I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm a commentator. I am what commentate, commentating is supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be telling you to vote for a certain party. You know who I support. I support Dr. Cornell West. But I'm supposed to tell you straight up, the numbers that Joe Biden is doing right now are lower than the numbers presidents who were performing at this same time who lost. Did that come out clear enough? Listen, listen. Listen, let me, let me. The numbers that Joe Biden is doing right now, the numbers, the polling numbers that Joe Biden has right now are lower than what Bush's numbers were when he lost. They are lower when other presidents, when Jimmy Carter lost re-election, he was doing better at this time of the election cycle than Biden is doing right now. I'm not talking about the people that won, like Obama, like Clinton, or Bush who won re-election. I'm talking about people who did not win re-election. He is doing worse than the people that lost. Do we understand? Are we clear? It's not because of Tim Black. I didn't make it happen. Sonny Johnson didn't make it happen. Tesla Figaro didn't make it happen. Nina Turner didn't make it happen. You understand what I'm saying? Paula Jean Swearingen didn't make it happen. Julian Assange didn't make it happen. Okay? All right? None of these people made this happen. It's not our fault. He sucks. It's not our fault. The American people, I'm going to play a clip for you. Let me jump to this. Let me jump to this. We've heard enough from the sisters, right? Sisters, they put it down. That sister told her, did she do it? We're going to go back to her. I got one more clip. I'm going to let her finish up a little bit. You got to hear this. It's important. How should the campaign deal with this? Yeah, Nicole, I think it is uh, a broader uh issue because if you know it's just another example i think we see this larger trend uh, that voters just don't want to see a rematch between president biden and former president trump they've said it in poll after poll after poll but now, at the end of the day that's what they're getting that's what they're getting <laughs> and i think if you ask the biden campaign they will tell you repeatedly you know voters aren't yet um uh really focused on it. They're not yet accepting that Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. But of course, we're getting closer and closer to November. So the question is, is when is that going to happen? Now, the Biden campaign will tell you that when that does happen, that Biden's numbers will go up. People will feel more comfortable with Biden. People will accept the reality that it will be these two men. But I th and, and, and see, look, and look, and I'm not being, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to rag on this sister because she's doing her job. And though I think I totally disagree with her point of view on this. Most Americans know it's down to Trump and Biden. They've accepted that. Like I told you, there are a lot of people that don't realize that Dr. Jill Stein and Dr. Cornel West, 
and De Claudia De La Cruz and the other amazing people that are still in this race, the RFK Jr., whoever, they, a lot of people don't know about those people. Okay? The DNC has done an excellent job of keeping those people off of mainstream media. Okay? <clears throat> done an excellent job of doing that. People didn't even know Marianne Williamson was still walking the earth. People had no idea. People don't even know what a junk Uger is. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? I know you know. I know I know. No diss. No diss. Let's keep it real. People don't even know who Dean, Dean Edwards, what's his name? Phillips. And I do this for a living. I forget his name. Phillips. Don't even know who the hell he is. So this fallacy that at some point it's going to sink in and people are going to go, oh, oh, them too. Oh, okay, well, shit, you, why didn't you say so? That's not going to happen. Okay? It's not going to happen. It's meatloaf. You get the meatloaf. Oh, you get the lasagna. It's meatloaf for lasagna. It's taco night. You get chicken or beef. That's it. Chicken, beef. Get a pork. All right, so let's go to the next thing. I want people to understand, and this is important, folks, because there are people that are watching this show for the first time. They need to understand. First of all, I hope that you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you can't become a member of this show. We are back. Okay, we are back. I'm so back. I'm so back. Mark Johnson, I'm back, I'm inspired, I'm pumped up, I got a new tool, I'm in this, I'm not going nowhere, you don't have to come get me, okay, your man is back, I'm with you, you're with me, we're together in this, okay, we are back, I want you to understand that I'm a fighter for the working class, I support working class people, I come from working class people, that's all I've ever been, okay. Got to learn some skills, did my thing, okay? Working class person. I want what you want. I want to take care of my kids. Now I got grandkids. I want to take care of my old, my, my, take care of my mom. I want to take care of my, my friends, my family. I care about us. I'm rooting for us. The real shit that's happening with people across this country What's really going on? What's really happening? Watch this clip and understand what I'm telling you. Being here of the economy affecting people the way it is right now. Dixie Shaw, the director of Hunger and Relief Services, and John Blanchard, who serves as the assistant director of Hunger and Relief Services for Catholic Charities Maine here in the county, say there are several factors that have led to a perfect storm. There was um, a lot of money out there to be able to buy food uh, during COVID-19. It was a stressful time, of course, but it, it also came with some resources. And that money has dried up at this point, and it's happened right about the same time as food prices have increased. The economy is a real challenge for everyone right now. I don't care who you are. Ends aren't meeting. It seems like things have gotten so expensive, especially up here. It appears to be the electricity and the fuel costs. Both say these conditions have led to an increase in use of the pantries. Statewide, we've been seeing a 30 plus percent increase in usage in pantries across the state of Maine. Speaking with different pantry leaders, we've got uh, 20 plus, 25 plus in the county that we serve. Everybody's reporting increased usage. I mean, some as much as 50 percent compared to what they would have been doing a year ago. What? All right, folks. That's Maine. That is Maine. <clears throat> People don't go to food pantries because they don't want to. They, they don't go to, no, how can I say this? People go to food pantries because they need to. People go to food pantries. It's not chic. It's not chic. It's not, there's no uh, fine cuisine at a food pantry. There's no foie gras, no sushi, no, uh, you know, no porterhouse steaks, uh, 
no, uh, I don't know. What are things that grow under the ground, cost a lot of money? What are those things people people fight over them? What's those things that grow? They're very expensive. That crustaceans, they, they, the thing, truffles. There's no truffles. Well, folks, there's no truffles, okay? You don't get that at a food pantry. You get basics. You get canned goods, non-perishable items. That's what's at food pantries. This is Maine I'm talking about. I don't know the demographics of Maine. But I've been on this planet for almost a half a century. And I've been a lot of places. I've never met a black person from Maine. It's not about, it's not about race. What I'm telling you is, things are tough everywhere with everyone. She sound like Tim Black. She sound like me. She said, the ends ain't meeting. She said, the ends ain't meeting. The ends aren't meeting. That sound like Tim Black. That's something I say. The ends ain't meeting. The ends. The ends. Meanwhile, what are, the, what are the Democrats talking about? What are the Democratic Party talking about? Jamie Hurston talking about his damn self. He talking about we need to vote for Biden because Joe Biden has been helping so much with diversity. It gave him a job. See how great he is? He earned a job because he gave Jamie Hurston a job. Jim Clyburn say, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous that people have been saying they're not going to vote for Joe. Them people are crazy. I've been walking around. I asked my niece. I said, niece, are you going to vote for Joe? She said, huh? I said, are you going to vote for Joe? She said, hell yeah, I'm going to vote for Joe. See, she's going to vote for him. Then she started laughing and ran away. Then she asked me for $200. I gave it to her. These people are delusional. This, this sister, this woman, this mother, aunt, aunt, someone's mother, someone's aunt, someone's sister, someone's wife, this lady is telling you she's not lying to you. The, the, the gentleman that says the numbers are up 30, sometimes 50% more people showing up than this time last year. I thought... Because I keep hearing these talking points coming out the mouths of Democrats. They keep telling me how things are so much better. Like, they keep telling me this is the lowest unemployment there's ever been for black people. Oh, you mean the numbers that when people stop getting unemployment, they're automatically assumed to be working again? You mean those numbers? Oh, okay. Record number of jobs been added. Oh, you mean the jobs that came back after the pandemic? You mean all the jobs that were lost? Because of the shutdowns, and then those businesses that open back up, those numbers that you're counting as new jobs are really jobs reopening that were closed. Oh, okay. Because you've been misleading a lot of people telling them. But see, you can't mislead this. You can't mislead how many people are lying for food. See, you can't pay off that sister. You can't pay off that brother in that video to lie. They're not saying that to help Trump. They're not saying that because this is not Fox News. This is not Sean Hannity trying to get you to vote for Trump. These are regular working people telling you what they know. What they're telling you is that 30 to 50% of the numbers are up. Of people going to the food pantry who need help. And we have delusional people. I want people to realize that if you want, if you are the president of the United States, you have a lot of power. It does not have to be this way. It does not have to be this way, Johnson. They keep making excuses. <clears throat> have you ever had a friend that was down and out and was struggling? And it hurts your heart. I remember when, um, I remember I had this friend this one time. I remember I had a good friend. And my friend was really going through it. 
He was going through it. His name was Andy. And, <clears throat> you know, at the time, I was living in the hood, and we had an apartment, and it wasn't spacious. And we didn't have much ourselves. But I made space for him. But you know, like all things, you know, eventually it got tough. It got tough, right? Because we're in a confined space. It was only going to be temporary. I couldn't continue to let him do it. Couldn't, I can't let you count surf, but so long. I'm a married man. Can't do this. Andy, you got to find another way. It was the worst thing in the world to have to take Andy to a shelter. I remember when he got out the car, he got out the car, man, he was at the car. He was like, man, don't you worry about it, Tim, man. We used to call him Doe, Doe Boy. Because he was chunky, you know. Doe was like, man, sorry, man. Sorry, man. No, man, no, no, man. That, man, fuck that, Tim, man. You my best friend, man. You, you held me down, man. My old mama won't take me back in. You took me in for two months, bro. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, man. I'm going to holler at you, though. And I felt so bad, you know, because because he was my friend. Because I cared about him. But, folks, I'm trying to tell you, I did not have the money to put him up in a hotel. I did not have the money, neither did he, to put money down on an apartment. He needed time to find a job, then to stack some paychecks. He just needed time. You ever been in that situation where a person just needs, like if you were in a better position, you would gladly help him, but you're just out of that position. I want you to know, if you ever been that person who was down and out like that, <clears throat> your real friends, your real friends feel a certain kind of way about not being able to help you. I felt bad. I felt like I was letting them down. There's a big difference between the way I felt when I had to drop off my friend Doe, Doe Boy, at the shelter than the way Joe Biden and these elites feel. First of all, they don't know these people personally. So they have no... No real human connection to any of these people. But unlike Joe Biden, I really didn't have a way to help. I didn't have money. I didn't have means. And all I kept thinking was, if I had the means, I'd help him. I wish I could go back in time and have the means. But sometimes it's like that. That's how life is. I want you to know, that's not the problem with the Democratic Party. That's not the problem with America. America, that's not the problem with the Republicans. The problem is not, we don't have the money. We don't have the will. We don't have the will. The woman and that, the woman and man in that video I just showed you are telling you the gospel truth, that there are people in Maine who are relying on food pantries 50% more than they did last year. And all we're hearing is how well we're, how well we're doing, how it's misinformation that a bunch of Russians are online telling us and a bunch of bots are online telling us and a bunch of the TikTok is trying to infiltrate us. Folks, if people were doing good, people would be feeling good. If people were living good, people would be feeling good. If people, was, if people were well off, people would be showing it. If you were happy, if life was going well for you, if you, everything was covered up roses, if everything was taken care of, if you weren't stressed out, if your money was adding up, if the ends were meeting, there would be nothing anybody could say to you that could make you think negative. Because that's not how people work. People are not sitting around looking for an opportunity to be upset. That's not what people do. People are not playing a game. People are not pulling one over on Jim Clyburn. People are not trying to gaslight Jamie Harrison. People are not trying to run a smooth one on the Democratic Party. It's that bad. 
Say it with me, y'all. It's that bad. Come on now. Say it with me, people. It is literally that bad. The Democrats don't want to accept reality. Our political system doesn't want to accept reality. The Republicans don't want to accept reality. America, the people that are running America, do not want to accept reality. They do not want to fix it. It's our job to make them fix it. Poverty is a choice. Hungry people are a choice. Just like they're choosing in Gaza. They're choosing to starve those babies. It's a action. It is a de deplorable, intentional act. But now neglect is a real thing. You got to ignore someone. You got to you gotta neglect them. Neglect is to know there's something and say, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I know you need it, but I, I'm not going to do it. That's what neglect is. Neglect is not, you can't do it. That's scarcity. I'm tired of the gas lighting, y'all. I'm tired of the gas lighting. Let me go to a couple comments, man. Let me go to a couple comments. Manu says it is that bad. It is that bad. It is that bad. And here's the thing, Manu. Thank you, Manu, for the comment. The thing is this, folks. I'm not saying that the council of every crime that has ever committed. But there is a direct connection between crime in poverty. There's a connect line. There's a direct line to the two. People that are doing well, unless there's some psychological issue, I'm not thinking about going breaking in your car. It's not, you know, kids do dumb things, reckless things, but notice, no one's making a career out of doing something that could give them 10 years in jail just for fun. There are other factors. <clears throat> I'm not saying everybody. Majority of people, the majority of situations that people find themselves in, economics has something to do with it. Economics has something to do with it. If you are doing well, are you thinking about going to a pantry? If you are, some people watching this show, if you are at a point right now where you're able to buy your food at the grocery store, are you thinking about going to a pantry? That's a personal, you know, I'm not asking you to put your hand up or put a one or two up or anything. What I'm saying is only the people that are in that situation are even th thinking about that. See, a, part, a lot of what I'm saying with the Democrats and Republicans, particularly the Democratic Party, is they're saying that what we're saying isn't true. They're gaslighting us. They're saying you think you're in pain, but you're not. That said, oh, you just saying that. You're just you're buying into some some bogus online conspiracy. This is this is nonsense. There was no conspiracy. There is no conspiracy. Interesting enough that people would deny their reality to follow it. All right. Give it up for that, y'all. The Democratic Party has to make a decision. And I, 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 hey folks, I'm sorry, but I believe they already made that decision. They decided, they have been deciding that losing is fine. As long as they, as long. <clears throat> it appears that they've decided that losing is fine. And we're going to let them have their wish.
Okay, folks. You get what you, you get what you pay for. You get what you ask for. Be careful what you wish for, right? <clears throat> Tomorrow. Oh, I got one last thing. I want to talk to oh got one last thing. This is about Diddy. I know I had some people that believe that the Diddy is set up. Okay, so I saw this now. I saw this now. We all know about what happened with Diddy. His home was ransacked. The feds came there looking for evidence. They're investigating him for trafficking. Okay. I saw Torre or Joy Reid. I saw a clip. I want you to know, this disturbed me. Okay? This disturbed me. Let me play this for you. disturbed many years ago okay I, I i know this man well enough to call him and say hey i need a favor yeah and this might have been 10 12 years ago that i called him and say hey, i have a family member who i want you to hire them as an intern yeah. and uh i have never talked about this publicly and i and he said yes and they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? And he wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh, and the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like oh, this is this is God. how it goes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted people to recognize that. Now, now look, I don't think Tory has a Tore has a reason to lie. I don't think that his family member had a reason to lie. I'm taking it for his, I'm taking him at his word. And you have to decide for yourself if you're going to take him at his word as well. All right? Once again, Diddy deserves his day in court. All right? Get your day in court. And, and, you are innocent until proven guilty. You have the presumptuous, presumption, presumption, presumption of innocence. That's it. We're presuming you innocent until guilty. All that. Folks, I want you to know, we got some predators. We have predators out there. And I don't care how much, someone, how much money someone has. I don't care how successful they are. I don't care where they, where they bought their cars from or what kind of skin lotion they use. or if they, I don't care. If you are praying on the weak, I have no respect for you. I have no respect for anyone who prays on the weak. I have no respect for anyone who abuses the weak, who takes advantage of the weak. No excuse at all. So if this comes out, if this turns out to be true, folks, I want you to know there is, like I'm just seeing people that are automatically just being, um, Okay. Someone texted me. I thought it was about the show, about something with the connectivity of the show. I just want people to understand. We must. We must hold people accountable for what they do. And I don't want to hear this coaching stuff. He's part of the coach. I don't want to hear that. If you're praying, if you're praying on the week, you are you are a scumbag. You are below scumbag. You are you are the stuff that's underneath the barrel that sits out in the backyard behind the, the gas station, behind the carryout. You're the stuff that's underneath the trash can. If they ever lift that, if they ever lift that trash can up, the grit and grime that's underneath that has seeped through from years of bad carryout garbage. Like, <clears throat> that's you. Whatever that is. The detritus, the grime, the sludge, 
whatever that is, is under the underneath the metal can that's rusted on the bottom. You are that. If we ever in this country can get to the point where we can see a bad guy, is that. It's sort of like what Cat Williams said. Cat Williams said, there's only good and there's bad. There's a good side and there's an evil side. And we don't want nothing to do with the evil side. Okay? We don't want nothing to do with the evil side. Once you realize, because I think a lot of us don't believe that everybody's, that there's potential for everybody to be evil. I think some of us don't believe that. Why else are they, why else are they sort of dismissive or wanting to accept Candace Owens and, or, and don't want to accept sometimes that black people do horrible shit too. And praying on, and look, I'm sorry guys, we're praying on, <clears throat> playing on praying on black women we're trying to make it in the industry where it's a total uphill battle for them. And using your power to uh, extract from them is, is a, in, in this case, Tori said it was a male friend, a male family member. So yeah, that's something that goes under talked about, right? That men are also put in these situations. See, this is something that needs to be talked about even more. How men are being put in these situations. Ah, it's not just Jaguar Wright talking about it on YouTube, right? It's not just Dave Chappelle talking about it. Somebody else said, this is what's, Torrey just brought it up. So anyway, I just thought it was, in, I thought it was important to put it out. If we ever could get to the point where we could all just say, hey, we're against that. We're against that in our society, we'll be a lot better off, man. I hope that for us. I hope that we could see a scumbag and say a scumbag is a scumbag, you know, and, and be against that. Woo! All right, guys. That's it. That's all I got. Look, tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, my guest is Sunny Johnson from Sunny's Corner. She will be my guest. She will be here putting it down. I'm looking forward to it. I hope that you will be here tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are back in a big way, Johnson. I want to give it up for all my people that came through. Um, D said, record-breaking homelessness in Los Angeles. Nigel said, it's that bad. Secret women don't talk about it's free check for many. It's a free check for many. Arlene Chambers says it's messed up. All right. Sylvie says it was an abuse of power. That's what I'm saying. I hear you. Barbara says I support Diddy. As you should, as you should, as you should. And I got no problems with that, Brian. Now, now, if he did these things, if anyone does these things, anyone who does these things, I got a problem with anybody who does those things. All right. Well, that's really all I got, guys. Look, tomorrow, once again, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, go to jointimblack.com. Become a member of the Tim Black Show. Become a VIP of the show. Go to jointimblack.com. Do it today. It helps support this channel. The channel is back in a big way. We're trying to update some things. I think, you know, maybe I'm in a, <clears throat> been, been going through a lot of stuff, a lot of personal stuff. And now it's like getting a new, Getting a new tool to use on the show. This is new. This stuff, right? Kind of gives me another 
gives me a new feeling. And I can put my comments on the screen. <laughs> Ariel said, I'm ready to get high again. <laughs> <laughs> How can I stay away when I got great people like this? I got great people like this. <laughs> All right, guys. Number love for you. <laughs> Number love for you. I'll see you on the next one. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Shout out to my Tim Black Wolf Pack. Don't you let nobody take your corporate, like I always say. Hey, when they say, Tim Black, why are you fighting? When they say to you, when they say to you, why do you care about this politics stuff? Why do you care about what's going on in the community? Why do you care about what's happening? You tell them, you tell them. I say, you say, we say, it's a new day. My people, my people, my people. Here we are. Let the here. Most news shows are suspect. They don't focus on black issues, and when they do, it's all fluff. How does that help your life? How does that help your family? How does that help the culture? They don't. The Tim Black Show is different. Tim Black gives you news for people who can't stand the news. Real, authentic, researched, entertaining, on point. Don't let nobody take your cornbread. Visit www.timblacktv.com today. Get black breaking news, politics, culture from someone you can trust. TimBlackTV.com. Join us today. <laughs>